Hey, I'm Dave here, and we've got a new episode in the art review series. And today we're going to check out the work of John Kuo. Um, very, very cool artist. Um, I think I did discover his work um, in Pinterest. Um, so before we actually start reviewing his pieces, he does focus more on creature designs. He does have a few mechs, but I think his specialty is on creature design. Um, his portfolio is actually not um, updated, I think. I do recommend you check his Instagram out. I will link the links in the description below for you to check out. Um, but yeah, I, I think it does focus more on creature designs, especially prehistoric kinds of um, creatures. Um, he does remind me of Raph Lamotan. I, I think I think I did review his or Lamotan's work a few episodes back in this series. Um, so yeah, a lot of dinosaurs, a lot of like canines, felines, and shit. He does have a few mechs and quite a few cars and vehicles. Um, and they're actually kind of cool, but I think I'm more interested in his dinosaurs, right? I, I think I did first discover his work through this piece. Um, this was the, the one I found through Pinterest, uh, during my Deviant art days when there wasn't really an art station, you know? Um, and yeah, I did find this awesome, awesome kind of breakdown of this kind of T-Rex design, right? And I just like the, the kind of sheet look. Because oftentimes when it comes to like digital art, it's almost always kind of like finished and very presentable. I mean, this kind of sheet is presentable, but it's nice seeing the kind of breakdown. So this is more of a demo kind of tutorial. Um, and I also like the fact that he did render or paint this T-Rex with just a simple round brush. Um, I actually did find the, the more finished version of this. Um, he did add a simple background and again, he did use a default Photoshop brush, I believe. And uh, yeah, looks really cool. Um, so this is back in 2013. And again, he actually does like often, he likes to often leave the the initial line sketch in the finished kind of painting or rendering. Again, a lot of these pieces are from ArtStation. Um, if you want to see more of his updated um, work or his more recent work, I do recommend you check out his Instagram, right? Um, but yeah, a lot of like creature designs, very cool ones, very kind of reptilian-ish. Whenever he does something out of like the prehistoric kind of uh, world, um, let's say kind of an alien kind of thing, excuse me, um, he'll do something that's a bit more kind of reptilian-ish. And I think it's heavily influenced obviously by the, the kind of dinosaur kind of world, plus a lot of like feline and canine, especially kind of cats, he likes cats mostly compared to like dogs. Um, and I think it does show off in his more kind of alien types of, uh, creatures, right? Um, so he does a few mechs, and this one is more of a suit. Um, so obviously it's going to be like sci-fi, and this one is actually more of a sketch. He did develop the, the the chest and the head a bit more. But I do like the, the design. It's a bit consistent, and it just looks kind of um well-rounded, even if it's still more of a sketch, right? Um... I believe that this is the only character I've found in his portfolio on ArtStation. Um, and he can actually do like character designs, but I think he just likes to focus on creatures and stuff. Um, but yeah, well rendered or well sketched out. Um, you can actually see a few of his line sketches, I think. Um, and he did obviously go in uh, more in detail with the like chest, the gun, and like the face. Um, so yeah. Some more dinosaur stuff here. Um, and he does have a painterly kind of style. Not super rendered. Um, I do like the fact that I can actually see a lot of his like brush strokes. Um, and yeah, he really, he really does remind me of Raph Lamotan. Or maybe Raph Lamotan is influenced by 
um john kuo you know um yeah you, you, can, you can actually see the kind of line sketch here in this kind of uh back leg or in the the leg on the other side right it's kind of further out um And I think it does simplify his brushes to just the uh, the default ones. Um, he, for this piece, he did use some kind of texture brush. You can actually see some of that spacing. Maybe he did have like the the dual brush kind of um, setting on for that. Okay, it's not okay. Again, very kind of cat like, right? Even if it's kind of out of the realm of the the dinosaur and yeah the dinosaur kind of world it's or prehistoric kinds of animals um it's he, he still kind of takes the the anatomy like the basic anatomy and kind of uh, just more morphs it into something that's a bit more alien-ish right and again not super defined kind of rendering style just very very painterly and again he likes to leave out that nice line sketch in the beginning very very gestural kinds of strokes for the sketch and you can actually see it in the the main kind of um, silhouette painting right it, it, he reminds me of uh, input 2 because input 2 does the same thing um, or input woe where he does leave the, the line sketch scene in the uh, the final kind of result right um, and it, it's not like an inked piece it's kind of a pencil kind of a sketch and you can actually see the rough sketch in the beginning, perhaps. And then he does have another kind of sketch face where he does kind of do a more defined kind of sketch over, right? Um, some kind of carnivore. Um, yeah, so some steps of that kind of dinosaur. Um, oh yeah, so this is more of a helicopter kind of study. And... Uh, this piece actually reminds me of Jay Cheo Park. Um, I don't think... I think I haven't done a review of his work yet. But uh, I do like the the, impression, the impressionistic strokes. Um, I just like seeing the brush strokes in the painting. You know, it, it just feels more natural and more art, artistic that way. Um, and if you're someone that's not too defined, I think... Um, You'll enjoy looking at pieces like this, you know? So I'm actually seeing this from behind um, in terms of this kind of step process, right? So it does start out with a very kind of simple... Um, why is it taking so long? Jesus Christ. Um, and you don't, you don't even have to kind of layer your uh layers right in photoshop when you do this kind of approach you can be a bit more direct when you're um a bit more impressionistic and i don't think it works to be so layered when you're trying to be impressionistic uh maybe you can do it if, you're, if you just want to be safe in a way but when you're trying to plan things out with your or through layers your work will will not kind of end up being too impressionistic uh, maybe doing it kind of just for safety I think it, it's um, okay, or it, it fits the impressionistic kind of approach. Think of John Waller and Liberto. Um, he does have like a lot of layers, but they're not organized in any way. They're a bit kind of scattered, but I think it does it whenever he does the next step, you know. And he he does have like a lot of steps. Um, so yeah, I like seeing the basic round brush, that default Photoshop round brush. Um, so these are more sci-fi stuff. He can do like sci-fi types of a work character costume suit work um so yeah some helmet designs here um, but again his portfolio is not filled up with these sorts of things oh yeah i believe john kuo does or john jonathan kuo does teach in or he's one of the instructors in the the brainstorm school um yeah so you can check him out there I think he does have a course on drawing or something. Something about being clear with your concept art. Um, yeah. 
So yeah, I like this breakdown, rough sketch, and then a more refined sketch. Not too tight, but just enough to kind of get the the main details down, right? And then maybe some kind of underpainting, perhaps. Um, we're actually kind of losing the, the line sketch here. And then a more kind of refined painting with some background elements to it. Oh, this actually reminds me of Jurassic Park, you know? I believe this was the, the creature that... Um, the Lophosaurus that killed the... Uh, the fat guy. <laughs> Very sad, but um, yeah. Again, I do like the fact that he's, he is kind of showing off the um, his kind of process breakdown. Rough sketch, a more defined sketch, an underpainting, and then kind of a paint over. But in his paint over, he does leave the uh, some some of his line sketches in. Um, it does have like a concept art appeal. You know, it, it does feel a bit more conceptual when you show a bit of the, the line sketch, right? Um, I think Evan Lee does this thing as well. Although I don't think he uh, does it Evan Lee sometimes will add a line sketch or kind of like a line stroke in the end um, just for kind of like a style kind of look. Um, so a lot of his like line strokes, if you ever see kind of Evan Lee's artwork, a lot of his line strokes are kind of added actually in the end. They're not the actual initial line sketch. So it does have like a nice look to it. But in John Kuo's case, he does leave the initial, well not the super initial sketch, but the more refined sketch in the very end of the fuck <laughs> painting also oh, the final painting doesn't have the line sketch <laughs> sorry about that um but you can i'm sure he, he does have quite a few that he does leave the wherein he does leave the line the line sketch in so <laughs> uh, i'm actually starting the the review or I'm going through all of these images kind of backward um, just because you know I started out with the, th the kind of T-Rex so I just kind of ended up starting everything from the in reverse essentially so in this case he actually started with a silhouette right a simple background first and then a silhouette very kind of graphic kind of approach and then he did kind of a line sketch to kind of refine stuff perhaps and a bit of rendering and at this stage he did kind of develop the face enough to make it look like an actual kind of cat. And again, he does have a cat kind of um, a feline kind of lean. And uh, yeah, and you can see a lot with a kind of carnivorous kind of anatomy or feline anatomy in his um, alien creature designs, right? So a bit more development here with the spots, a bit more rendered, and of course the final kind of painting right here. Uh, cool stuff. Ah, uh, it's loading. Fuck. Okay, so this is the uh, the full version of it. Um, and again, you can see a lot with that brush strokes. Um, I think he does sharpen his painting in the end because they feel like it's actually kind of sharpened, right? Just a bit. Um. Oh, this is taking so long. Okay. Uh, in terms of the, the proportions of this kind of dinosaur, the head feels kind of small. Um, I'm not sure if this is if this is an actual kind of dinosaur. Um, but for me, the head is kind of too small. Um. But I do like the way he simplified the background. He did add the, these sorts of like flying creatures, dinosaurs. And even the way he simplified the palms, very kind of heavy on the silhouette. But the silhouette isn't even that clear. It's very, very impressionistic, right? You know what? Let me delete some of this, some of the images here, just because um, I think it's because of the, the amount of tabs I have open. So maybe that's slowing everything down, right? So. Wow, that's a, that's a lot. Um, oh, so this is more of a breakdown. Um, and again, I like seeing the seeing these sorts of things. It's kind of like a tutorial in a way. And the, these used to be the type of tutorials you would have in the internet before YouTube was kind of heavy on the tutorials because you there was a time when 
you hardly had any kind of art tutorial on YouTube and most of it was actually on or in the event art in uh, they were kind of sequenced in terms of images right um, a lot of them were kind of more like process kind of shots instead of like actual tutorials and that's actually how you'd uh, learn stuff um, but thankfully you know in this age um, YouTube is a bit more our videos are more of a they're stronger in a sense right so very kind of rough sketches of a shark here ah! um, <laughs> hello um, so he did kind of uh, do some shark studies here um, I do like the fact that he does kind of emphasize or he's a good example of how drawing is 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 an essential kind of aspect to um to creating art and um it should not be neglected right um i mean you can skip it if you if you kind of if you have a good understanding of like shapes and form but as a beginner i think being able to draw stuff is a very very um, useful tool right um look at this mech very very awesome and again, very, very impressionistic, right? And uh, he doesn't have a lot of mechs um, in his art station portfolio, but when you actually do see his mechs, very, very interesting kind of design. Um, reminds me a bit of um, uh, John Wallen Liberto, right? But jo John Kuo is a bit more varied in terms of his brush. Um, brushes, right? There's a bit more brush variety in uh, John Kuo's work. Um, more mechs. Very awesome. Look at the way he simplified these back mechs or these mechs in the back. Um, I think he did have to paint them again, but in just kind of a simple way. He did develop this a bit more because obviously it's kind of the main focus. Um, even though it looks kind of detailed and kind of super rendered, it's actually not because you can actually see a lot of the the brush strokes and I think it helps if you kind of save the image in a smaller kind of size so it does encourage the the viewer to see it in the big picture kind of um, view oh and I like how he showed the the kind of sunset right when the Sun is kind of shining um, behind the this kind of planet right and I like the fact, or why do you keep saying it? Why, I like the fact, I like the fact. <laughs> I like how, I like how he uh, did this kind of lighting effect here, right? Oh, he does have like a series of kind of raptor designs. Um, so I'm going to, oh, this one's more of a study of this kind of gecko. Um, oh, so uh, this is kind of a, a prehistoric kind of rhino thing. Very kind of rough, not super finished, but it's enough. Ooh, nice study of a lion. Simba. Ah, it's loading. It's loading. Come on. Ooh. Saber tooth tiger. Damn. Um very aggressive looking. Um I don't think he uses the mixer brush or the smudge tool. I think he just kind of he just paints it, you know. Um, uh, why is it taking so long, man? Come on, bro. Uh, damn, I'm sorry for the delay. I forgot what this was called. Um, but it's a it's a big fucking bird back in the day. Um, Almost like a descendant of the the raptor kind of um, dinosaur, but just way bigger. <laughs> I think these are like prehistoric horses or something. So this thing must be fucking big. Very nice kind of MIG um, plane here. I like seeing the, the kind of lines here. Um, they're not exactly like part of the the line sketch. I think it's part of the design of this plane, this MIG plane. Um, 
This one feels more like a keyframe to me. Uh, oh yeah, maybe he did use a bit of the, the blur thing here. To kind of suggest a bit of movement. Um, yeah. Oof. Nice kind of study of the shark. I'm not sure what this is. I think it's something... Maybe it's... Fin is so sharp, it cut a fish. <laughs> Jesus. Um, although I love this kind of painting and rendering kind of... um. This, this one's a bit more developed in terms of the painting. It's kind of rendered, right? I mean, it does get looser in the back. Um, but look at how he's, he indicated the, the cuts. And even the reflections of the water. Um, that's awesome. Uh, more of a dinosaur, um, excuse me, ugh, kind of design here. The face is kind of weird though. Um, T-Rex arms, big legs. Damn. Oh yes, he does have like a lot of raptor stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if this is more of a personal piece or for a project. Um, maybe it's a personal piece, I think. He does have a lot of these, um, and his raptor concepts are a bit more rendered and defined. The environments are obviously way more painterly compared to the actual focus, which is the, the actual dinosaur. Um, and a lot of his um, raptor stuff or kind of carnivore dinosaur stuff or concepts are kind of feathered. Um, and I think the consensus in science, in the science, is that most of the, the dinosaurs, or at least the these um, bird descendants, or the bird, or the the ancestors of our current birds, they were more feathered than kind of reptilian in terms of the the skin, right? Um, it would be really nice to see an actual dinosaur, you know. You know, maybe there are, you know, like, <laughs> dinosaurs somewhere in the, in some kind of, like, cave in this planet, you know, maybe in some kind of, like, hidden underground sanctuary, hopefully. Um, I can only dream, um, given the fact that I am kind of a fan of just, like, the whole dinosaur thing. Um, very awesome creatures, right? And I still want to ride, like, a dinosaur, you know? And uh, it makes you wonder how would they look like if they just developed, develop, developed more, you know, like once they started to like use tools and shit, like would they become like humanoid reptilians, you know? <laughs> uh. Now, this concept is actually kind of cool because whenever I would think of the past, I would always think of some kind of tropical um, environment, right? But I'm pretty sure there was kind of areas in Earth where there was snow, you know? So how would that look like with a dinosaur? Um, so I, I am kind of liking the, the way he added a bit more feathers in this one to kind of show how this evolved or adapted to be suitable to a kind of snowy colder colder environment right so that's kind of nice um and again very painterly with the background but well it's actually a bit more developed just a bit but obviously it's way more rendered when it comes to the actual kind of raptor um thing jesus christ it's taking so long uh Oh yeah, so this one's more of a desert kind of environment. I believe this is current Australia. <laughs> um, and I like how they're kind of moving, right? It's not just a stationary kind of um, frame. And even the shot is kind of weird. I would expect him to use a 16 by 19 or any kind of longitudinal kind of shot or horizontal shot, but... He did use a port or landscape shot. He did use a portrait, or most of his raptors are in a portrait kind of mode. So that's very, very 
um, different, right? Look at that. Oh, this one actually killed something. Right? You can actually see the the cuts here from this talon, right? Mm. And even though the consensus is or the consensus is on the, the feathered bird raptor, um I still like <laughs> I am happy with the choice that Jurassic World make or world made. Um, because I believe in Jurassic Park, they weren't really. It wasn't common to cut, uh, to indicate or to show dinosaurs with feathers, especially the T. Rex or the Raptors, right? The ancestor, the ancestors of the birds and all. Um, but yeah, I still like the the reptilian kind of look of the the Raptors. Um. And I even think it would look weird if it had feathers. Um, oh, he, I think he did copy like a feather and then just kind of duplicated that repeatedly. Um, <laughs> I think I'm, uh, I'm so redundant with it. Uh, anyway, um, so this one's more of a forest kind of um, bird raptor thingy. He does have quite a few of these and I'm actually kind of tired just... <laughs> I mean, I still like the the paintings and the concepts. Um, if you compare it, or if you compare this batch of work, to most of his um, concepts, uh, they're quite more they're more developed, I guess. Um, now this one's more of a process kind of thing, step by step kind of process image. People hardly do this anymore nowadays. Um, if it's not, they'll usually just go for a video. Um, because these sorts of things just don't get as much attention, you know. And, uh, you know, times are changing. So this one's the, the finished, the more finished kind of version of the this panther concept. Oh, by the way, I think the, the black panther actor died um, a few months back. So that's kind of sad. Um, R.I.P. Um, whatever his name is. <laughs> I think he had like colon cancer or something. That was sad. Um, very rough, very painterly, but most of this tiger is actually in shadow. So it is interesting to see how Mr. Kuo handled the, the parts in light. Right here, right here, right here. Um... And again, whenever you're doing a, a concept that's, say, a mech or some kind of creature, character, you don't have to kind of fully develop the background or environment. You just need to have enough to kind of give context to the to this concept right here. And that's pretty much it. You don't have to go overboard. And the point is to be a bit more smart with how you spend your time when you're doing concepts and paintings. Now this one's a very very rough sketch of some kind of environment. Um, so a plane, fighter jet plane. Oh, uh, the, uh, an Apache, I believe. I like how we simplified the, this one right here. Um, and again, the environment is super simple, um, very vague. It's more abstract than impressionistic for me. But I do like the cleanliness of this Apache right here. Um, I really like how Apache, the Apache kind of helicopter looks. It looks so aggressive, right? And just mean, but sexy at the same time. Um, yeah. I'm not sure what this is. Is this some kind of radar thing? Um, oh yeah, I, I did notice this in his uh, portfolio. He does have a lot of raising, ra raising, racing cars, um, race cars in his art station portfolio. Um, I actually did not include them in this kind of review session 
just because I'm not super interested <laughs> in race cars. Um, but yeah, I did include this one because he did show the process and and first of all, I like I like the the smoke kind of effect here, and this feels like a keyframe of sorts, right? Because it's actually kind of moving and in action, um, and I think the environment elements here, the environmental ele elements, help to kind of suggest that kind of sense of movement and um, yeah. So it did start up with a rough background, rough sketch, rough underpainting, and I think in this stage he did determine the the smoke kind of effect or the dust effect coming off the the wheels of this car and then paint over paint over paint over uh -oh. so this is the the full version um of this race car some particle effects to show the the bits of ground flying off Um, some night study here, night study with a horse, um, very, very impressionistic. So that's going to be a plus again. Um, oh, more process shots. So this one does have a line sketch with the background and then he did work on the background. And it's very common to kind of start from the background and work your way to the foreground. Whenever you're doing a scene or some kind of keyframe or environment concept. Um, yeah. And then he worked on this night. And then the, the nights in the background. And he did check his anatomy with the, the horses especially. Um, nothing actually changed in, in this phase. He's just kind of breaking things down I guess. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. And I think creating a nice enough background does kind of transfer to the end kind of painting because you can actually see some of that orange red in these faces even the even in the actual kind of final painting you can see that kind of remaining reddish um, hues there it just adds a bit more grounding or foundation to the painting painting right uh, full version um, very very painterly not super detailed and refined but yeah uh it's a plane what else can i say um the battleship is actually kind of simple and very vague um hmm. Um, this one does feel more like a keyframe because the the frame of this the aspect ratio does have a cinematic kind of um, uh, frame size or aspect ratio um, very very horizontal <sighs> and yeah very impressionistic <laughs> way more than his usual kind of stuff um, especially with the background um, but yeah, it's very, very cool. Oh, this one's actually a bit more clean. Ah, oh, look at that. Look at the way he simplified this kind of whole kind of um, landscape in the background. Seeing it from like the sky or from above. Um, even the way he did this sunset reflection in the water. Wow, look at that. Now this plane is a bit more, it feels rendered, but I can actually see a lot of his strokes. Um, although I, I guess it's a bit more clean and maybe he did use um, or start out with a silhouette and uh, kind of layered it in its own layer to be a bit more clean to kind of separate it more from the, the background. Um, so whenever you're trying to do something like this, a concept that does have this kind of viewpoint, I think it helps to be a bit more organized with your layers so you can actually adjust things easier. Um, and I think it's a good time to go for the John Park or Jordan Grimmer kind of route with the layers. Now for this one, I don't think he... 
used a lot of silhouettes. I think I just painted it directly um, with an underpainting, of course, and then painted over everything eventually, right? Whenever you're doing characters, I do suggest to kind of paint them on their own layer just to be safe. Um, separate the main thing or the main concept element from other supp supplementary um, concepts or elements, right? Um, and again, you can actually see some of that reddish tones or hues in the end painting. Um, uh, so this is the, the full version. Um, very, very cool. Very impressionistic. It's a bit cleaner, especially when it comes to the edges. Um, makes sense. But I love seeing the, the brush variety. He does have a branchy kind of brush here to kind of add a bit more variety in his um, brushwork. Um, so some kind of horse studies here. Very rough, but I like how we did the muscles here. You can actually feel the form, the, the 3D-ness of this, of this kind of animal. Um, Especially with the legs and this neck. Damn. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. I love this plane. Um, look at that. It, even though it's a bit painterly, the whole silhouette itself is very, very sharp and clean. Even with this one. Um, this one's a bit more simplified, obviously, because it's kind of in the background and further away, but. Wow, I think there's this nice complementary look wherein you have a clean silhouette and then a very kind of painterly interior kind of painting within that silhouette. Now he's not overly um, impressionistic. He does keep the shapes within the main silhouette kind of clean as well. But the way he renders stuff, it's still very... It leans more towards the impressionistic kind of um, approach, or because uh, whenever you're trying to be impressionistic, you're going to be a bit, you're going to be a bit more rough and not super clean, and I think there is an appeal to that, you know, to that kind of approach. So you can be kind of deliberate or be more choosy with how you want to be impressionistic. Um, you can be impressionistic from the get-go, from the start, or you can just be impressionistic when it comes to um, rendering concepts um, or your designs, right? Uh, I believe this is a leopard. Although, oh no, it's a saber-toothed kind of tiger. Is it? More mech stuff. In this case, it does have a tank friend with it. And this guy is signaling to, uh, I believe, go forward. Um, wow. Look at how he added these small arms in the front. Very cool. Damn. And again, the way he did the background, um, you can obviously tell it's kind of in the sunset kind of lighting scheme just because the front parts are kind of more lighter right and uh, I believe this is set in a desert kind of environment um, just because of the palette used oh I love this kind of sketch or painting study of this kind of ancient bird I believe um, the beak does remind me of some kind of eagle because eagles usually have that thick kind of beak. Um, so this is probably some kind of flightless bird, I believe. But look at the anger, right? Eagles usually have this kind of eyebrow form. Where they're kind of angry at times. Right? They have that kind of seriousness to them, you know? America! Um, so Tiger Studies... Um, I like how he did the shadow again, and he did this kind of light shade here to show off this lighting 
um, beam of light casting in on the front paw of this tiger. And this back leg is just left as a silhouette with a few brush strokes. Um, the environment is kept super simple. Um, now this one actually reminds me of the work of Aaron Blaze. Um, Aaron Blaze does have a YouTube channel and I believe he did work on quite a few Disney movies. Um, and it, he does have a background in animation and he also has a, a similar interest in felines uh, or animals in general. Oh, look at the way he rendered this shark. This one's a bit more developed. Right? Rendered even. The way he did the water, the way he did the, the fish, and even some of the reflections casting in on the tops of this of these animals, the ray and the shark. Um and I think it helps that he did save the image in a smaller size, because you're going to feel more of that sharpness when the the mm, resulting image that you see is kind of not too big in terms of its size um, it will add a bit more of that sharper look in the end um, oh ho 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 look at that bird so he did combine his fascination of knights because he does quite a few knights or night studies right and then he combined it with the, the world of the dinosaurs. Um, imagine seeing this in real life. Um, wow, that would be so cool to kind of ride one, right? I'm not sure how they would sound, but uh, I can only imagine, only imagine. Whoa, look at how he uh, distributed the lighting here. The end of this cliff is set in light, including the top part of this bird. Wow. Because you can tell a lot of story, or you can have a lot of storytelling just with the, the way you distribute the light. So you can tell this one's set in a sunset kind of theme, or time. Uh, look at that. So maybe they're just about to uh, fly, or, or maybe this guy is just kind of guarding shit. And, uh, you know, having a peek. Oh! Oh, plane study. Ah, it's taking too long to load. Come on! Um, so this one is an another plane study. I'm not sure if this is the plane that can lift off vertically. Because I know there is a plane out there that can kind of reverse or move its jet engine and actually um, fly vertically. Um, but yeah, awesome study. Oh, I love this eel study here. Um, he does focus in on the head a bit more. And as you kind of go further away from the main focus, it gets a bit more impressionistic. Um, look, at, look at- Ah, I like it. I like the look of it. And again, even the way he distributes the lighting. Like how this part is kind of in shadow. Right? And then this part is going to be a bit more saturated and, and lighter, right? Wow. Excuse me. Fuck! Um, so whenever you're trying to do something that's impressionistic, you don't have to go full on like rough. You can pick a certain part to develop more and your work will end up having a bit of an appeal that way. Um, and it, it will also help in terms of driving your viewer to see a focal point. And in this case, the focal point is obviously the head of this... Um, eel right first of all the background does help create the contrast it helps the eel to pop out but 
in terms of the rendering, you can kind of drive that attention further to a point. And again, in this case, it's the, the face, the head of this eel. Um, so moving on, we have a dragon concept. He doesn't have a lot of fancy stuff or concepts. However, I can actually see that dinosaur design in the head of this dragon. It's very kind of T-Rex-ish. Um, yeah. Oh, look at that reflection again with water effects here. Um, it reminds me of a piece by Victor Hugo Harmatiuk. Harmatiuk? Harmatiuk. Um, he does have a similar kind of concept where the there's this kind of animal or kind of creature. It's kind of just... It's very close to the, the surface of the water. And you can see a lot of the kind of water effect. And... Um, Oh, so this one's a sub-concept, a submarine concept. Um, feels very much like a keyframe, but, and it almost feels gouache-like because it's a bit more clean um, compared to his sketches, obviously, but yeah, it's a bit tighter in a way. Not too tight, but tight enough because he did kind of clean up the edges of this submarine quite well. Um, so more of a mech concept, um, spider-esque, sci-fi themed bug mech. Oh fuck man, look at that. Damn. So this this could be his kind of second specialty. His main thing would be pro would probably be creature design, and then the second thing would be sci-fi mechs. Are there fantasy mechs? <laughs> Maybe. Um, but yeah, most mechs are kind of in the world of science fiction. So yeah, very nice design skills. He does have a certain look when it comes to his mechs. It does have a certain aesthetic. So this one could be, it could be a fantasy piece, but uh, he, again, he likes his cats. Meow, meow. <laughs> again, very impressionistic with the background. And obviously because the, the main thing is the cat and this character, it's going to be more rendered than impressionistic. Um, you don't have to do it in all of the parts. Um, so having knowledge of how lighting works. So in this case, th this part of the cat is obviously going to be in light. So it's going to be it's going to show more of the detail. As you go further back in shadow, it's going to be a bit more vague and silhou silhouette-ish, right? So more sci-fi, a, a character design that's more about the the suit and the weapon than the actual person right uh... oh yes so another panther concept a bit more painterly in this one oh, this is kind of the style that i prefer seeing or not maybe not prefer but i just find most appealing it's very kind of rough, but heavy on the, the planes and very kind of direct and again, impressionistic. Um, so that's it for this video, um, this art review of John Kuo's work. I will link his website and his Instagram in the description below. So I do recommend you follow him on his art station and especially in his Instagram. Because I think he does post more regularly in that platform than ArtStation. Um, and if you are interested, check out his class on Brainstorm and Brainstorm on Brainstorm. The school um, by, uh, or founded, I believe, by John Park and James Pack. So, yeah. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, keep painting and stay free.